Hi everyone and welcome back to Butchery 101. I'm Christina Glenoga and today we'll be breaking down a beautiful rabbit by Valley Farmstead. Today's rabbit butchery breakdown will yield two forelegs, two hind legs, two loins and two tenderloins, two bellies, one carcass for stock, two kidneys and a little bit of leaf lard. Let's take a little tour around the rabbit to define some landmarks and definitions. This is where the head would have been. Here we have the foreleg, that's his little shank, and you can see up here it actually uh, extends a little bit over the shoulder there. Here's his little rib cage and the belly flap, that's often bacon if uh, you're cutting a pig. Um, this is one big beautiful hind leg and you can tell that that's really the majority where the meat comes from. Um, his little shank. And now along the back side you can see these are the loin muscles or the longismus. That's his spine. And then back here are what would be considered the oysters which are pretty small in this particular animal so I don't know if anybody really goes for them. Um, on the inside here the the kidneys are still around. That white stuff you see in there is the leaf lard, the most neutral flavored uh, fat typically. And then here we have the teeny tiny tenderloins, um, still the most tender muscle. Now something to note about the farm that I got these from Valley Farmstead is that they are an independently owned and sustainably run farm, They're really beautiful. So here we're going to take off the foreleg, that's going to be the first move on most of your breakdowns. And what you want to do is grasp it with your non knife hand and pull it out so that you can see back here what I'm pointing at is the end of the shoulder blade. And you can sneak your knife in just underneath that and as you continue to pull away with your left hand cut the meat with your knife with just very shallow cuts and right here I'm having a little bit of trouble yeah right there I'm hitting the collarbone and I wanted to make sure to include that detail for y'all because it's important to know that um, there is a little collar bone that you do have to look for and it's in here it's not attached to anything else, so it's really easy to miss, and no matter how you're eating this rabbit, um, it's going to be a hassle to find later on. So, I showed these clips to you a little bit out of order because this, that arm was the more successful one. This is the first one I tried, and I tried this method where I went in from the front end of the rabbit, and right here, I'm just hitting the collarbone the whole time, and it's so... That was such a hassle, you guys. But um, I ultimately ended up just pretty much doing the method that I just showed you, which is to say I focused on the back side as opposed to the front um, to take off the majority of the leg. I just wanted to include this type of like learning process moment um, because I think if we're all learning together, it's important that you see the mistakes that I'm making because I'm certainly no expert. But uh, I think it is important that we all learn together. Oh, there it is. And because we made sure to get this rabbit from a wonderful farm, I know that no matter what I do now in terms of cutting, the flavor and nutritional value are still going to be there and they're still going to be wonderful. Now that we have our four legs off, sorry, there's a really loud car out in the background. Um, but now that we have the four legs off, we're gonna take the belly flaps off. And that's these guys here. So I always just turn the rabbit so that it's away from me, or sorry, rather, so that the hind legs are away from me. You pinch the end of the belly 
and using your knife in small shallow cuts while you're pulling the meat away use the tip of your knife to release the meat and so there I'm checking to make sure that I'm not going to be cutting into the tenderloin or the loin or the kidney at all and only cutting through the very thin belly now I've just reach the point of the rib cage. And so what I'm gonna do here is score down the front, the breastplate of the rabbit to release that belly flap. And here you can see the very ends of the ribs. It's those white spots there. They look like white bumps, but they are in fact the cart cartilage ends of the ribs that kind of fold over into those white bumps. And here I'm making sure that my knife stays as close to the bones as possible because what I want is the thickest version of the meat coming off of these ribs. And there we are, one side of belly, one side of rabbit belly, that is. Now, off of a, an animal this size, that is obviously a small bit of meat, but it is super worth it to go after because ultimately, that's how you're gonna get the maximum yield from this animal. Now on the back there, what I'm pointing out is there's a little seam. You can see that there's that darker muscle uh, on top of the loin. Um, I was kind of dreaming about scoring that seam there to see if I could get like the entire muscle off in one go. But honestly, what ends up happening is that I don't get that seam to work because I think mostly because my knife isn't as sharp as it really ought to be. But also, it is a really small amount of meat that I'm losing. And I'm not even necessarily losing it, it's just gonna go into a trim pile when I'm, uh, when I'm breaking down the loins. So it's not really that big a deal to, to just leave it on the carcass now. And so here you saw the same process going where I'm pinching the belly itself and pulling away as I'm snipping at the point where I want it to come away with the tip of my knife and very shallow, shallow cuts. And there again, you can see the very end of the ribs. There's the rib cage. And when the belly is open like this, you can see the ends of the rib tips like that. And so that's a good indication of where you want to put your knife when you are taking off this belly portion. And again, at this point, I'm trying to keep my knife as close to the bones as possible to make sure that the piece of meat that I'm taking off is as thick as possible. When you're doing something like spare ribs off of, say, a, a pig, um, that's a moment where you want to keep your knife a certain distance away from the, the bones. Um, but because we want the most of the meat to come off of the bones here, we're trying to keep the knife on them. I'll include a link to my pork belly video and you can check out that process. And yeah, so there we are, a second slab of pork belly. Again, it does seem like kind of a small yield right now, but that is definitely how you would maximize the yield off of your rabbit. There are some kidneys on the inside here. And because the meat is so tender, I am using my knife here, but in animals like pork, and even, I probably could have done it here too. Uh, I probably could have just pulled there we are, yeah. You can mostly just pull the leaf lard out. And the special thing about leaf lard is that in at least beef and pork, I'd have to check in on other quadrupeds, but at least in uh, beef and pork, that is the least flavorful, or that is to say, that is the most neutrally flavored fat. And so it is often prized for stuff like baking or candle making. So now we're going to move on to removing the hind legs and what I'm doing here is scoring the meat on the back side. 
First, always make sure that your blade is as clean and honed as you need it to be. And yeah, especially for stuff like this where you're having to cut through fascia. There I'm just uh, scoring the loins because later on we'll be removing them. And then here I'm scoring just above those oysters I had pointed out earlier because I want to try a method where you can pull the oyster out completely. But I'm not sure how successful it was and you'll see why. Now that we have the rabbit belly up, uh, I'm scoring on either side of the pelvis and here I'm trying to pop out the, the leg bones from the hip and it didn't quite work. Like there is still too much meat connecting everything and holding it all together, which makes sense because the, the hips and the leg bones there, that's like a very important part of the rabbit's anatomy in terms of what they do when they're still alive. And so of course it's going to be very strong connections. So I've just cut about halfway through the meat itself on the top side or the inside before uh, dislocating the bones and then flipping him open like this where I can get to the side more easily. And now I'm pulling away the hind leg with my left hand and just again using very very shallow cuts releasing the leg from the rabbit. And there you have one really gorgeous big thick rabbit leg. I'm flipping him over to do the other side and we're going to try that method I was mentioning where you pull the entire oyster out by itself. So if you're familiar with my chicken video, this is very similar to that. Um, I'll pop a link up in the corner to that. And yeah, so the goal is to cut the meat from the backside all the way up until you release the leg bone from the hip socket. And you can often tell that you have done that by a, the hip socket looks like a circle. And then you brace your knife, sorry, you brace the hip bones down with your knife and use your non-dominant hand to pull the entire oyster muscle out of the hip bone. Pretty good. It doesn't seem to make a huge difference on the yield of this, so I don't think I'll be messing with that in the future but you can see here that side is the, the first one I did and this is the second side where I pulled the oyster out so just judging by how clean the bone is on the second turn um, that's a pretty good method for maximizing your yield Great, so now we have this carcass where it's mostly just the loin meat that's still in there. So those are the tenderloins here on the inside of the animal. I've seen a few breakdown methods where they just kind of chop through the spine crosswise here to get like two inch pieces um, for like stew or other, or like an etouffee. But what we're gonna do is actually take out the muscles themselves. So something that I'm finding a little bit complicated here is that because of the rib cage and the lack of legs on the carcass now, it's not laying flat for me. So that is definitely something to watch out for. In the future, what I might do is take a towel and lay the carcass on top of the towel so that the ribs don't give me so much instability. And here I'm scoring on just on either side of the spine ridge that I pointed out in the tour. Um, something you'll find is that the vertebrae make kind of what looks like an X. Um, like if you were to take a cross section of the rabbit, uh, like if you were to cut them apart laterally, you would see an X shape. And so the loins are underneath the arms of the X. And so now just now you can see that I'm getting onto the outside of that vertebrae X I'm referring to. And that's where most of the meat is. Again, always pull and push the meat around with your non-knife hand that that hand is really important in butchery because it allows you to see things that you're that you literally cannot see with your eyes because it's, it will be concealed by like another piece of meat or a bone so you can feel around and like use your fingers as your eyes 
and I always like to work in a symmetrical fashion so you can see I'm trying to take them both loins out simultaneously. This is also another instance of a moment where you want to keep your knife right on the bones to maximize the piece of meat that you're going to be taking off of there. You might have noticed that I turned my knife around multiple times during the breakdown and that's something that you want to keep an eye out for when you're shopping for butcher knives that you can flip the knife around in your hand securely during cutting because you're going to have very irregular shapes to cut around and it's best to have um, every iteration of your knife available to you without having to put it down because most likely your board is going to have a little bit of fat or grease um, or moisture on it that's going to make it slippery and unsafe. So there's one whole loin that came out of the rabbit that the main muscle there is known as the longissimus muscle and in most animals of this uh, most quadrupeds it's one of the most tender muscles and that's why it's so appealing. Here I'm showing you that there's some gunk on my knife and it is a good just a good reminder to keep your knife as clean as you can hone it often as often as like whenever you feel it not cutting as sharply or as easily as you want it to um, make sure to just take a moment and hone it Great, and now that's two full lines off of this carcass of rabbit. And you can see there's still a lot of meat still on there, even after we take off the tenderloins. There will still be plenty of meat afterwards, um, so it's going to make a really flavorful stock. And actually, I've already made the stock as of the time of recording this voiceover. I've already made the stock and I can tell you for sure that it is super super flavorful. Now these are the tenderloins. Again, they are the least used, one of the least used muscles in the entire body, especially for a quadruped, and they'll always be very very tender and they're also very small. Now, if I were in a restaurant or a butcher shop, I probably wouldn't bother taking these guys out. And to be honest, you'll see there's still even a little bit of meat left underneath there. But it is an important exercise, I feel, in tenderloins because tenderloin in beef is maybe the most popular meat in the United States. And or rather it's one of the more popular pieces of meat. And the thing about it is that it's such a small part of every animal. So the ratio of these two little tenderloins versus the rest of the edible portion of this carcass is so small. And somehow this is still like a very prized muscle in other animals. And I just wanted to, I always want to point this out because the way that we value meat in this country, I think, is a little bit counterintuitive and doesn't encourage very ecologically sound eating. Um, so yeah, I just want to make sure that everyone sees how tiny these tenderloins really are. And that's about it for today's rabbit breakdown. I'm really lucky and stoked that I get to cook this stuff in the near future um, and the nice thing the especially nice thing about this stuff is that it's so nutritious and it's I know that it's farmed in a really sustainable way because I know where it came from so if you ever get a chance please hit up Valley Farmstead Rabbits their website is linked down below and they do ship I think they ship nationwide and certainly within Washington State but you can know that this stuff is really sustainable and it's well raised so that the animals are really healthy and happy and the farmers themselves are just really sweet people. 
Next week, we'll be exploring butchery methods for duck, so I hope you're ready for that. And I really hope these videos help you kind of get a little more courageous with your cooking and your butchery and what proteins you're willing to try. Please uh, leave a comment if you have any questions or want to say anything about rabbit or meat in general and like and subscribe so you don't miss any of these channels. Oh, sorry, shows. Also, hit me up on Instagram and TikTok. Thanks, have a good one. Bye.